What's up everybody, Jason from JTV Live. Today I'm gonna to be making a video that's kind of been requested and that's a real time sort of lighting and use of the Bighorn oven. I've had this bad boy for about a year now and I kind of got a little system down, which makes it really easy to get a pie or two in and out of this thing in under 30 minutes. Let's get it. My preferred method of lighting is still my propane torch. I know there's a lot of other little ways out there I'm thinking about doing a video experimenting with different ways to get these pellets lit, but the torch just always seems to work for me. They start to smother out. It's really quick to kind of get it going. And I also feel like I get a real even light on these pellets, which is kind of key to getting that bed of coals going, which is going to make subsequent additions of pellets ignite quicker. Start off by loading two scoops into the tray. And then we'll go ahead and hit it with our torch. The pellets we're using today are the Pit Boss pellets. If you happen to catch my other video where I kind of compared, well, I mean, over the course of my channel, I have compared several different pellets, but my last one was putting the Pit Bosses against the Bear Mountains. And the Pit Bosses did do the best, I think mainly because of the way they're ground, the coarseness of them, and then they're really short as well. So I think that these just give an optimal burning profile for these wood burn pellet pizza ovens, especially the Bighorn. I worked the torch around these for a good solid minute, kind of keep it in one area till you get the flame up and then I'll move and focus on another area. And if it goes out, that's okay because I'll just go back and hit it with the torch and it'll reignite. Kind of slowly by doing this process, <laughs> we'll get to the point where a good portion of the top, I'd say around two thirds of that surface area, the top of these is lit. Now that we got our pellets burning on the tabletop, we're gonna go ahead and start a timer on our phone for five minutes and I'll see you in five. After five minutes, you can see we got a little bit of smoldering going on here. Don't you worry about that. I know this is probably a point of frustration for a lot of bighorn people, all this smoke, but this next step's gonna take care of that. Go ahead and take it and we'll put it about halfway in the back of the oven. That way we can hit it with that torch and get it kind of re-going again. And then we're gonna push the drawer in and let it sit in the oven with the feed ramp open for another five minutes. So since this is already going, it's really gonna only take just a, a little tickle of the torch to kind of get it up and flaming again. And go ahead and slide it on in. See you in another five. All right, with another five minutes elapsed, we are ready for the next pellet addition. And this is what's gonna actually be preheating. What we've been doing up to this point is just getting the fire going, getting that nice bed of coals going that will allow us to add more pellets without smothering it out. This addition, we're gonna go for two scoops. And when we scoop them in, we wanna kind of get them further to the back of the firebox or the part that's closer to you. Cause what you'll find is kind of as the ones in the front burn and crumble, then they feed down on top of that thinner layer and ignite a little bit easier. Just something that I have noticed. Also, I have a really kind of good little wind situation going on here now. It's more of a crosswind than front and back. So something to definitely experiment with in your yard is getting this thing into an optimal wind position. 
too much wind could be bad, but a little bit of wind can help you. Just using the scoop that came with it. So one and two scoops. Now you can see kind of in classic bighorn fashion, that fire has kind of gone out, starting to smoke out of the stack a little bit. Well, one thing we can do to fix this is to create a simple updraft by leaving this feed door open and opening the front of the oven. Literally within a second, it reignites. We'll let it sit like this for like a minute or so, and then we'll start our next timer for 10 minutes. When those flames start to get nice and thick and chunky and kind of tickle the roof, that's when I know that this is lit enough to close the back feed ramp, put the door on and start our 10 minute timer. Cooking in a backyard wood pellet fired pizza oven is an art and a science. So I'm not gonna try and cover it all in this video. Today, I'm just gonna really be working on managing the fire aspect of it. So that being said, once this 10 minute kind of period starts, that's when I go inside and start grabbing all my pizza stuff, getting it on the counter and ready to go. Cause when the oven's preheated, you gotta start moving, baby. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm not gonna lie. You got a heck of a wind going on and it did put out the firebox. This happens, but that's why you got the torch. Just a little encouragement from that torch, you'll get this thing fired right back up. Just like that, we're back at the races. Go ahead and close this hatch. And in 10 minutes, we'll be throwing our first pizza in. Today, I'm gonna make two pies. I got this new pizza dough recipe that I think I finally perfected. So I'll be making a video on that soon. We're gonna do just a classic Neapolitan pie with tomato sauce, fresh mozzarella. And then one that's kind of become a family favorite is a barbecue pizza. I do half tomato sauce, half barbecue sauce with some chopped up leftover smoked pulled pork, mushrooms, and cheddar cheese. It's freaking good, man. Give it a try. Let me know in the comments what your favorite combos are. All right, and I'll see you in 10 minutes with that pizza. You see, I'm not using a temperature gun or anything. Really, it's just time. Yeah, you can get real precise with the temperature gun and all that, but it's not needed. You just gotta give the damn thing a good 30 minutes to get up and running. And then after that, your pizzas are only gonna take a minute and a half. So you pay it up front and then you get it quickly in the long run. More time for seltzers and hanging with the fam. that five minutes have gone by, we're gonna add one scoop. That's gonna be the fuel that's used to cook this pizza. Give a little blow. Wednesday at night, it's pizza time. Pizza in the oven, set a timer for a minute and a half. So about a minute into our cook time, Go ahead and open the door and just see how it's doing. I'll take it out and rotate it halfway if it looks like it's cooking more on the other side. And this pie looks like it's gonna be ready in about another 30 seconds, so see you then. All right, minute and a half is done. Let's pull the pie out and see what we got. We got a beautiful Neapolitan pizza. Crispy crust, feel soft on the inside. Let's go ahead and get the next pie. But before we do that, let's get the fuel in for the next pizza. We're gonna go ahead and put another scoop and a half. Also set a timer for five minutes because that'll be a little bit of recovery time and time for these pellets to get lit so that next pie cooks just as good as the first one. Could be my baby shorty in a whole wide world. The way you move your body's been this whole damn check on you. Got my fingers crossed that you're not. We've had about five minutes of recovery time. Next pizza's ready. Go ahead and just add about a half a scoop. 
just enough pellets to cook this pizza. Remember the oven's super hot, all that residual heat in there. This isn't an insulated oven. If you like to check out an insulated one, check out my review of the Change More Pizza Oven. Thing's freaking badass. It's probably gonna be my main oven, but I still like doing these big horn ovens because there's a lot of people out there that have them and they are kind of are tricky. If you get this thing down, you're gonna be balling at all the rest of them. Added that half scoop, gave her a little blow, kind of get those flames going. Kill that timer, we'll go ahead and launch this pie. Now this barbecue pizza does have a little bit more toppings on it. So we're gonna go for two minutes on this. We'll check it about a minute and 15 into it. See you then. All right, we're a minute and 15. Let's see what she looks like. Oh yeah, she's cooking up nice. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it right where it's at. Definitely a lot of experimentation with this but I hope that these will get you kind of in the ballpark of where you need to be. Once you kind of get the hang for keeping this thing lit, you'll know kind of what little small pellet additions you need to do, sort of in between pizzas and to keep it idling. Like I said, that change more oven, I gotta, I'm gonna be doing a review on it soon. I kind of had an unboxing and overview of it. It's a lot easier to keep the pellets going and to bring the oven back up after idling for a little bit. The big horn, not so much, but for the price, this thing really can't be beat. The stainless steel finish on it looks amazing after a year in my backyard. I don't clean it, I don't do anything to it. Let's go ahead and see what this pie looks like. Look at that pizza. That thing is amazing. Some nice little brown leoparding on the bottom. Not really super dark, but that's kind of what happens with subsequential pies on this. It's not gonna get super leopard unless you cook this thing for 30, 40 minutes before you get it going. But no one has time for that. It's a Monday night. We just wanted a couple pies. Go ahead and bring this in and we'll wrap this up. Thanks a lot for swinging by guys. Checking out the big horn with me. Hopefully honing your skills with this oven a little bit better. I hope kind of this real time video helped out. Uh, if you like these kind of videos or you're really interested in backyard pizzas, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I do reviews and other stuff too, but lately I've kind of been grinding on these pizza ovens. I really enjoy it and it's a lot of fun. Make sure you subscribe. I'm only maybe 50 subscribers away from being monetized after two hard years of YouTubing, but you know what? It's a hobby. It's fun. I don't really do it for the money, but I, hey, I would appreciate that or at least a like or a comment to help get this video in front of more people. A little added extra value for you guys that stuck to the end. Something that we've been doing, you know, when you're cooking pizzas one at a time, it's kind of hard to have them ready for dinner when everyone's sitting down. And we like to make different types of pizzas and stuff. You might want a slice of this one or a slice of that one. So I cook all the pizzas ahead of time. I put them in on a little pizza grill and just set them on the counter or the oven. And then when we're ready to eat them, I cut them into the slices and I put them on trays that go into my air fryer and I reheat them for three minutes at 370 degrees and they come out just like they were in the oven. So good little hack to kind of either reheat your pizzas or serve them all at once once you're done in the backyard slaving over these things. Thanks a lot guys and we'll see you next time. Peace.